Hi everyone, welcome to our second live. I'm gonna be adding Pastifici Carlecci and we can, yay! Hello! Hi Giovanni, how are you? Ciao, I'm all right, <laughs> everything good. Fantastic, thank, thank you, you for joining us. It's um, it's a pleasure to work with you guys. I think you've um, you've joined the Tudeli platform um, a, a few months ago now, so it's fantastic to meet you personally as the founder uh, and to hear the story behind the uh, pasta and uh, the all the ethical aspects as well, uh, which is fantastic. I think initially I approached you about the you know the Earth Day coming up on yeah. Friday. Um, and you couldn't make it. And then I thought about it and I was like, it's, it's actually better because it should be Earth Day every day. <laughs> I totally agree. You know, that's, that's the commitment over here, at least. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, t talk to me a little bit about you, like, and how Pastifici Carlesi uh, started. And um, I love what you've done with the, with the playfulness of the name as well. And the brand is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, the story starts uh, quite a while ago. I mean, um, I, I embarked in, um, in the food uh, industry in 2008. So I left, uh, I left my previous career to follow this passion that I had. To be honest, I started a little bit earlier than that by, by doing uh, cooking classes, which has got not, not much to do with pasta. If it wasn't that, I was actually teaching people how to make a fresh egg pasta in, in their own kitchen as a sort of a hobby that then turned into a business. And um, in 2008, um, I opened up a business called Seriously Italian um, mm -hmm. with the objective of um, doing um, Italian style food using as much as I could uh, British uh, fresh ingredients. And um, soon after that, I started getting in touch with uh, British uh, farmers that they had, um, they had their own, uh, their own wheat, uh, some of them um, in 2009, 2010. Some farmer in the UK started um, regrowing heritage varieties, uh, so stepping right. away from what was the mainstream uh, wheat variety, which is the burlock. Mm -hmm. um, mostly were organic farmers. So they wanted to find uh, an avenue for their, for, their new, for the new flour that wasn't bred. Um, and, uh, and I was there desperately looking for someone <laughs> with, uh, with a high quality wheat to make my fresh pasta. So I came across an exceptional farmer uh, under the name of uh, Andrew Wilkinson up in Northumberland. Uh, we mm -hmm. met in uh, 20, I think 2010 or 2011, 2011 probably. And uh, he was growing some uh, really exceptional wheat up in his farm. He's an organic farm, Ginchester's Organics. For those of you who don't know it, go on gilchesters.com. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and together with Andrew, um, we started thinking, okay, let's try to make a fresh egg pasta with this. It took us a little while to get it all finally milled. Because uh, Andrew doesn't just grow. Andrew also meals his own, uh, his own grains and cereals. So um, he's a renaissance man, a bit like me, trying to do everything, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. and managing and managing and managing incredibly well. He, he also managed the PhD in the middle. So how did he do oh, wow. I don't know, <laughs> as well. Exactly. Um, it's one of those individuals just being next to them. It, it fills you up with a lot of positive energy and, uh, mm. and you know, will to do and make. And... So anyway, enough about Andrew. Uh, but, but we... we um, we started making a, a very good quality, uh, proper, uh, fresh egg uh, pasta with this semolina. Mm -hmm. And then the very next step was, why don't we dry this? So, okay. So we went, uh, we went out looking at um, how exactly it is that you dry pasta because, you know, people, most, most people misconception is that, uh, which is the misconception between inverted commas, you know, um, is that if you, if you make it, it's wet, obviously, and then you just leave it there in a dry environment, it will dry. Mm -hmm. And this is not a misconception. This is going to happen. It will happen. <laughs> but it will dry. But the problem is that it will dry, and then when you try to cook it, it will probably either cook very quickly, uh, so yeah. lose uh, tenure of cooking and texture, or it will, it will crack when it, when it cooks. Mm. So drying the pasta is not exactly 
something that is just a straight, straightforward that you can do in a completely artisan uh, way with no tools, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so we started, we started researching into that. And obviously, we were dealing here with, um, with Andrew's wheat. Uh, and uh, and uh, not all wheat have got the right characteristics for dry pasta making. You know? mm -hmm. um, so, so at that point, we had to go back and try go back to Italy, basically, and uh -huh. try to find out what to do with this wheat. So it was a funny. The process started at that point, and uh, the, the, the easiest avenue was to pack up um, Andrew's uh, flour, send it out to, to Italian uh, pasta maker, and, uh, and get them to, to tell us, to give us a feedback. Yes, it's good. No, it's good. It's not good. And, uh, and the feedback we had were all uh, negative. Like, no, this is not good. <laughs> 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 This is, not, this is not, because, <laughs> uh, because, uh, because, because, it, used because, to. because it wasn't good, <laughs> to, <laughs> to cut the longest story short, it was not, it was not really the right kind of, um, for me, for so many reasons, you know, like, uh, the, the wheat itself, uh, the, um, the way it was milled, it was a stone ground, so that adds a lot of specks, impurity, dirt, mm -hmm. uh, ash, you know, you, you name it, is in there. Um, the actual quality of the weight, and then maybe it was just a, a simple fact of, um, you know, how, how economical it was to actually produce dry pasta with it. So you, mm -hmm. you, you, have, you have this wheat, which is not 100% ideal for it. So yeah. you have to start retuning your drying process or your, your for, formation process. So mm -hmm. it gets really artisan at that stage where you're really trying to make this work. And... Uh, and that's when they probably just came back to us and said, this is, this is not worth it. Just, no, you know. What did you do? Well, well we, we, kept, we kept trying. We kept trying until eventually we came across um, someone uh, that said, uh, we've spelled. That we knew the spelled was our, was our best bet because, um, because there, was, uh, literally, there was some literature um, mm -hmm. explaining yeah. that, that spelled had a, had a different um, you know, gluten structure that uh, there was more suitable for, for pasta making. And there were some sub varieties of spelt, which were, um, which they, they performed well in the dry mm -hmm. pasta, in the dry pasta making. Which kind of dry pasta, which process, which recipe, we don't know, but they performed <laughs> well. So we thought, okay, sp spelt, is, spelt is the one to go. And, um, and eventually we did get some, uh, some positive feedback. Somebody probably tried a little bit more uh, than others. And, uh, and said, yeah, you can do this. It's quite a long journey, but, uh, but you, can, you can work on it. So we, we went ahead and bought um, not even what I would say is a, is a dry pasta production line, you know, just literally half, 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 of, uh, half of half, you know, <laughs> <laughs> almost a laboratory. And, um, and we started experimenting, not having anything uh, to, to start with. Uh, we started literally going with our own uh, with our own sense, um, and it was a uh, it was a quite a, quite a process quite a of trial and error. So how long, did, how long did that take? That started in two thousand nineteen oh, or that, that, took, that took that took a very long time. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, that started let's say in two thousand and thirteen. Oh wow! Maybe two thousand and twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some good results in 2013 that I wasn't happy about, but mm -hmm. um, we submitted the pasta to the Great Taste um, no Awards, the Guild of Fine Food, uh, to get a feedback to see how not good was this pasta, <laughs> and uh, and we got the two we got awarded the two gold stars. So clearly, I, I had I had a misunderstanding <laughs> of, <laughs> of what was considered good enough or not good enough, or maybe I was. I was over critical about um, about the product that was coming out, but in any case, it was um, we uh, we then we then got both me and, and Andrew. I guess we, we we got very we got sidetracked in mm -hmm. different direction. You know, um, yeah. he had his own uh, his farm is is an exceptional farm, and he was also studying on his PhD. I had this other business as he was in Italy that was performing very well, and uh, and it was quite an exciting moment. Mm -hmm. So. We, we're not exactly parked it there, but we, we worked towards building uh, better tools, yes. um, a better extrusion uh, process, um, 
that, that allows us to, to mix the grain and hydrate the grain much better. Mm -hmm. These are stone ground as well, so there's a lot of fiber in it. And uh, to get a better, a better product, you know, get rid of some of the defects, um, like the white dots. People mm -hmm. don't really look at the white dots, I guess. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but you, can, you can have small white dots in the pasta. And uh, those are little area, micro areas where the hydration didn't, didn't happen thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So those yeah. ones, they, they then release the starch more than they should in the water. Um, they might actually cause a crack or they might break. So it's, it's a defect. As well as visual, it's just a defect in the, in the making of it. So I got obsessed about getting rid of the white dots um, <laughs> yeah, without, without going crazy on the milling process. Because this is, there's, a, there's an interdependency here, which to get the right product, you start in the field. And then uh, the milling is a big, is a big chunk of it. Mm. And then there's, there's everything that happens in the actual trying manufacturing of the of the mm -hmm. of the past and drying it so all of that and uh, we went through a very slow process of uh, making it every now and then as soon as there was some news or some new idea and eventually we were happy with it in about 2019 so it took uh, yeah something like five six years i would say yes yeah yeah sounds yeah. uh sounds like a a good in a good way painful journey <laughs> <laughs> uh, because you ultimately i mean i've tried the product and and it's uh it's fantastic and you work with multiple restaurants now i think and um with uh, uh you know so many people out there uh people like uh like me have have cooked with it so it's definitely a good product they can put a thumbs oh. up a personal thumbs up <laughs> no that means a lot but um it would be like so how long does it take now then to to dry dry the pasta so it, it comes in and then because you you still follow a very slow process don't you yeah you are we, we have to we we have to it's um well we have to we don't have to but i would think <laughs> that uh, well you can you can do you can do the pasta with um in two different ways, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, in, in a way, is uh, is um, is pretty obvious. If you if you if you raise the temperature, you extract more water. So provided mm -hmm. that uh, that you raise the temperature and you allow the pasta to to dry properly, um, and properly means that uh, you 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 take water out and you allow the pasta to reabsorb a part of it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a process that you try to extract the water from the center of the of the pasta rather than from the surface. It happens through the surface, but you try to extract it from the middle. So okay. this way is uh, is how you you do it. Obviously, if the if the temperature is higher, you pull out more more um, more water from the core of the of the product, so you dry it faster. Uh, or if you, if you keep a lower temperature, mm -hmm. it, the process is a lot more is a lot gentler. Mm -hmm. And um, and it allows the product to to strengthen more the the fibers of uh, of the gluten and uh, yeah. and being more compact, and more resistant as well to to the cooking uh, to the stress of cooking, um, and, and not it. release as much starch. So the, the point is always uh, not to get the the nutrients out during the cooking mm, process, exactly. or not or not to lose them by using an incredibly high, um, very high temperature while you dry it. And I reckon that with the type of grain that we use and being uh, conscious of, uh, of the real effort that happens in the field um, and in the milling process, it's, uh, it's nothing but natural that I don't, uh, I don't allow this grain to go through a very stressful process mm -hmm. and then lose some of the, some of the goodness uh, in terms of taste and nutritional value that could well happen if you, if you use a high temperature. Um, very very suddenly. Yeah. Drying process. So our, our process is a slow process that uh, stays below the 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's the seating that we have. And uh, it takes us, uh, it takes us, uh, it depends, it depends on, uh, on various different uh, elements. It depends mm -hmm. uh, partly on the grain and most, in, most than anything on the shape that you're drying. Okay. So, um, yeah. So that, that goes into the how is the shape uh, constructed? Is it just is it just a hole in uh, in, in the bronze die and the pasta comes out? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. There's, 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 there's a lot <laughs> of engineering that is um, 
that is applied to the construction of uh, of these uh, these ties and um and yeah, no, that, I mean, I could never imagine that the, the shape actually changes things. So that, that's absolutely <laughs> insightful. Yeah, yes, the, the shape is very important. And, um, and so I think that, I mean, the, how it all started, it started over there, but it's a constant starting. Uh, this is a past feature that, I mean, effectively, we opened this past feature Galeski at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, very lucky with, uh, with the COVID and, uh, and everything else that happened straight after. So. Um, and also with the harvest and the farmers and, mm. uh, you know, the, the milling, the supply chain. I mean, we, we had them all, I think, pretty much. Now the energy price, so everything that could happen, happened. And that slows us down a little bit. But, uh, but in a way, it was, it was good because one thing that we, we thought we knew how to make pasta, right, uh, when we started. But it's a constant starting. So it's a constant uh, trying to improve, uh, changing, it's a constant evolution. Mm -hmm. um, and we we are now, I think, in a process where I reckon we are uh, we are defining our own identity as a as a pasta maker. You know. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, and uh, and what what I find, I mean, you're, you're originally Italian, aren't you, Giovanni? Yeah. 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 Didn't, didn't the <laughs> um, accent uh, give it away a little bit? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine is Greek as well, so I'm sure. I'm sure there is a yeah there are some accent flavors there but uh when um I guess uh nowadays when you um when you when you source the grains as well you're sourcing more than more than one for sure from what I've seen and you've mentioned ancient grains as well um and I quite like the the collaboration you recently held, uh, had with um with a local farm um and generally you've been an ambassador of sourcing local grains uh, so even oh, though <laughs> even though the pasta is um let's say influenced by your by your origin is very much british so i think it's it's important to, to highlight that and highlight the you know what what have you learned if you can share anything about collaborating with local farms and the importance of you know incorporating ancient grains in our nutrition and in our meals yeah, well, I hope you can hear me because in the meanwhile, yeah, no, but... something started in the in the back. Um, it sounds like an air compressor. You should Giovanni is, uh, is actually. Is, yeah. <laughs> well, is is a is a is a learning process. We, I wish I wish I could collaborate a lot more directly mm -hmm. with uh, with farms. Yeah. I think they're cleaning something with an air compressor, so maybe we've got a little bit. Yeah, uh, Giovanni is actually. Out. I should let everyone know that Giovanni is at, uh, at the place they're making pasta at the moment. So if you hear any noises because of that, but no, it's fine. Please go on. It's fine, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I wish I could collaborate more with uh, with the farms directly, and um, and I reckon that there is um, there will be more opportunity to do so in the future, because because uh, uh, I have noticed from my um, little uh, view of what is happening in the, in the farming world. I'm not a farmer, mm -hmm. but I've seen that uh, there are m m farms that are interested in, um, in added value to the, to the product. So to grow it and, uh, and uh, milling it uh, straight away so, so, to, so that they have that. And now they also, they have the, their grains, but they also have the finished product, yeah, the, the mm -hmm. flour. Um, and that is exactly the kind of farms that we can work with because we have a chance to, uh, well, it's exhilarating to see, you know, a field growing and then a field being harvested and then seeing being milled, you know. But, uh, but for us, it's very important the way it is milled uh, and the way it is cleaned um, from, um, from, from the brand, the but as well as for, from, from the very small... Um, powder and particles uh -huh, uh -huh. so there is a way to do it um and um and we're tapping into that every time that we work directly with uh, with the farm yeah uh, so it's it's a, it's a lot more challenging to to make a product when uh, when the grain is uh, is 100 percent from the farm unless it's a farm that is already milling and yeah. um is, is already you know very well no. Uh, n n knowledgeable about uh, all the art of milling, which is mm. there is harder to it's not it's harder to meal great flour, and um, and for us there are some requirements, 
So we tried, we tried to just, just at the beginning we started by, um, by sifting, because it's all yeah. stone ground uh, flour that we use. So stone grounding is, uh, is worth mentioning, is the process uh, designed uh, to obtain whole grain flour. So mm -hmm. uh, the, the, all the grain goes between two stones and it, it gets, uh, it gets um, mashed yeah. up basically, yeah? uh, grinded. Um, and then you, you have all of it 100% grind. And then from that, using different sieve, you separate uh, the parts of the bran and, uh, and there's very small particle or the semolina. So you can do various different um, grades of uh, whiteness, they call them like that, out of the stone ground flour. Yeah? Instead, uh, instead the, the conventional milling, roll milling, is the process designed to obtain white flour. So mm. right at the beginning of the roll milling process, in the first sets of stone, or sorts of uh, rolls, uh, you separate the bran, the, the, the brown bit, of, uh, which is very nutritional. And then it's down to the miller uh, deciding how much of this bran puts him back into the, into the flour, yeah? So how much old grain that flour is going to be. Uh, and this is not what we do. We work with the whole grain flour. So yeah. what we started doing here, the pasty feature, was to get the whole grain from uh, the farm, or from the mill, and then sifting it ourselves to make mm. sure that we, we separated the largest specks, the largest part. Um, why? Just because, because of the quality. The quality well, you need, right? <laughs> we, 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 lo we, love, we love, if we could, eat all of it. We will eat all of it. Uh, we should eat all of it. But some of these parts, what happens, they get stuck in the, in the extrusion process, in the forming process, the, the point where you, you make the shape of the pasta. Mm -hmm. And they could, in the, in the worst case scenario, uh, they cut it through and the pasta comes out cut. Mm. Or they do a micro lesion that you don't realize during the, the extrusion process. You can carry on for like three hours of extrusion, which is about 100 kilos, maybe 150 kilos of pasta, and it goes in the dryer, and then when you cook it, it opens up in two, or mm, well, there yeah, was the, yeah. the, the micro, yeah, it opens up. So this is a big defect, we can't really have it. Uh, so we started by sifting it over here, which made the whole process a little bit, uh, little bit longer. So okay. to get things uh, moving faster, we started working a lot with, uh, with meals, meals of um, artisan meals that they stone yes. around here in the UK. They get the flour from uh, farms. Some of them get some of the flowers imported to, to get um, a balance between um, each harvest. So that's how the largest meal they do it. The smaller meal, they can guarantee that all the grain is, uh, is British, etc. One of our biggest um, partners that we started working with was the Hodme Dot. Um, oh. Yeah, we have lots of affinities with, uh, with, uh, with Hodme Dot. We're very, very aligned in terms of uh, the values and the type of product that, that we wanted to do. And we discovered that it was okay, well, natural. Yeah, let's do, you got beans, uh, do you also have flour? Yeah, let's do a pasta with, let's, uh, do with pasta together, yeah. <laughs> let's, do, let's do a pasta with your product <laughs> so yeah there was a little there was a little bit of um, of learning how to 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 clean it properly to mill it properly um mm. they are fantastic over there and uh, they they also set up their own meal <laughs> while, oh, well. while we were doing pasta so now they've got control over that uh, that side of um of, of things uh, of the business of side of things mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i can see that that's a very good partner for us that they can guarantee is you know the, the the traceability and the provenance of the grain um they work with uh, some exceptional farmers that uh, they they are very much dedicated to reintroduce heritage variety um, mm -hmm. as well as ancient grains um and even more you know yeah they're really trying to get uh, to get products uh, back in here that, that, that were maybe like uh, left uh, and uh, left there and not cultivated for for a long time, not far. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as soon as that happens, we we are we are, we are really gonna be very up. excited to to work with it and experiment and try and give it uh, and get excited to see a new a new product coming out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we have learned a lot about. We're still learning a lot. Um, we have uh, we have um, a session uh, almost booked in uh, in a week or two, which I'm really really looking forward to, uh, where we're gonna meal together with uh, with one of our mm -hmm. one of our farmers. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be there mealing with uh, oh, wow. with, with, with them. So I'm really looking forward to that because um, I've been participating, but always 
you should film that for sure. yeah, <laughs> never never with my hands on 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 uh, milling so also the um, vincenzo which is uh, which is um, which is the guy that runs the production of the pasta over here he will come with me because it's also interesting to see you know how all the old stone grinding yeah, the, not just watching but participating too so we're very <laughs> excited about that you know so he's, he's very that, good that, because... that collaborative um you know culture um, I think that the food industry has uh, nowadays between and, and what you specifically guys are doing with educating almost um, uh, specific partners and farms and uh, and meals to to in the best ways that they can collaborate with brands like you. I think that's that's amazing. And yeah, we we try we, we we have to cooperate when it comes to to the flower making. Um, mm -hmm. to, the, to the milling, you know, to, to make sure that, um, that the way it's milled, it works for us. So, yep. um, yeah, that's... Uh, and then on the farming, unfortunately, I'm not, uh, I'm not a farmer yet. <laughs> I, wish I, I, wish I, I wish I could find the time to go, you know, to start some sort of agricultural studies. I'm very much into, into that and, uh, you know, learning a little bit more about um, the dynamics of... Uh, of, of, uh, of of, of the farming world to be able to share a little bit more of what's going on in uh, in the farm um but yeah over the years i had quite a lot of exposure in uh, of conversations mm -hmm. of uh, of what's happening and uh, been explained a lot of things um by by very patient farmers and, oh, and yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I think patience is their number one quality there <laughs> Yes, yes. Especially yes, when, yes. when something goes wrong and with, with everything they have to deal with. It's, um, it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it, um, takes, it takes a number of days to, to see a, a field uh, growing into something. So, yeah, we should all learn from, uh, from the farming world. From the but, farming, uh, you know, yeah. Observation yeah. and... Uh, and um, uh, what can I say? What's the word? Uh, observation. Well, keeping, keeping on it, you know. Keeping on it. <laughs> Patience and perseverance. Yeah, I think yes, that's, perseverance. That's, that's yes. perseverance. That's that's yes. the that's the biggest thing. <laughs> well, we owe we owe a great deal to to the farmers. Uh, I mm -hmm. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for for farmers starting, uh, you know, growing emmer in their field, growing iron corn. Uh, yeah, that was the other that was the other thing. We only had uh, we only had the spelt um, to at the beginning to, right? to play with. Yeah, so when the emmer when the emmer we started having the emmer flower around. That for us was a very important moment because um, because the the emmer lends itself uh, much much better mm. better than uh, than the spell to, to to dry pasta making. So we had a grain that um, that we could uh, that we could see results much faster. Mm -hmm. And then the icon was way too interesting not to not to put it through to a, a pasta machine and see what would happen. But that became one of our one of our favorite. But only we know how many shapes of icon didn't work. So we've done, <laughs> we've done anchor in so many different ways and they just, now, nah, now. Nah. And somehow Gili Rigati, which is one of the hardest shape to, 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 right. to do, and mm. you, you would think this is so delicate, it might not even be worth trying. And that one is the one that, that works. That actually works. Uh, go figure. Now, now, <laughs> now yeah, exactly. Now, now we do, now we do, pardon me in a second, I'll take it here. Mm-hmm. Now we do uh, these ones, um, the, the Ditaloni, as you can see. Sorry, the other oh, nice, yeah, the eight, yeah. Yeah, these ones. Um, and this one, uh, uh, we, we got better, as I said, in a way, because um, we, um, we had the shape uh, custom made. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, the shape, the, the bronze dye. Mm -hmm was custom made. It's, a, it's obviously is a, is a traditional Italian shape, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we, we stepped away from the ridge. We got from a very smooth surface and mm -hmm. uh, we got the, um, the thickness of it adjusted as well yep. as the diameter. So to create something that it was, uh, it was a helping the kind of flower that we had um, and the kind, of right brand, the kind of brand that we wanted to, to maintain in the, in the flower. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so that was it. It was. I uh, it was... I part of my shoulder. <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> that, that that was the, that was the right move, and um, and we had obtained a pasta with einkorn that has got an exceptional tenure of cooking, and yeah. it keeps uh, keeps the texture uh, very well. 
So yeah. as I said, it's I've always also, uh, I've also process. felt that when when I ate your pasta, it feels lighter afterwards. Like it doesn't. Um, I don't know how to to express it in more kind of scientific words, perhaps, but it it does feel like um, you do feel the difference, like from 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 a very traditional uh from a very not traditional standard pasta that you will you will buy from uh from somewhere else um and and something i guess that's really important i mean for for us in and what you guys are doing is is how you also package it which is yeah, um, which is important because you you have you have two two ways out there. I think one one is the the bags, like um, which would be interesting to know whether you guys are still doing it. The, the cloth bags, but also your um, your packaging is biodegradable, if I'm not mistaken, and compostable. So no, it's compostable. Uh, yeah, slightly compostable. two different things. Um, yeah, we have um, we pack the pasta in um, just one word on uh, on the, on the spell. There's a there's a there's a there's a spelt farm mm -hmm. uh, in Somerset, uh, Champagne Park. Um, yep. uh, they've been championing the spelt um, in, in, the, in the British market, uh, organic. Um, and uh, the, they say that the best way to describe it is that it keeps you it keeps you going for longer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's true. And that there's got to do there's got to do with the with the glycemic index of uh, of these grains, both uh, spelt, amber, and einkorn. Um, so they are easier. They are easier on our on our digestive digest, system, yeah. and, and they get broken down slowly. So especially if you have uh, with the fiber, uh, fiber rich, if you have them whole grain, you have mm -hmm. something that that really keeps you light and it keeps you going for a longer time because uh, it yeah. breaks down slower. It doesn't give you that peak of that you do unfortunately have with uh, with more um, highly intensive um, farmed uh, wheat. Uh, wheat, yeah. So that's that's a benefit that comes uh, from the grain. I I reckon that um, having a, a low impact uh, drying process, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it helps maintaining uh, the right balance, which is the balance that the mother nature chose for uh, for those uh, for those uh, grains. And we just try not to alter it. We try we try to transform them into something that you can add uh, and you can adapt it to whichever diet you you're following, whether you're vegan. Or you want to have them with meat, you want to have a whole balance in the plate. Mm -hmm. You can have it in a shape that lasts a longer time, because our pasta lasts a year and a half. Well, the whole grain flour will last six months. So we extend the shelf life without altering the, the nutritional um, balance and benefits that product. you have in the, in the grain. So that, that, that was, that's, the, that's the idea. And I reckon that that's the most sustainable element of, uh, of what we do. Coupled mm -hmm. with that, there is uh, the organic uh, farming, the choice of ancient grain, which um, uh, in Italy they all call farro. So all, all three, spelled them and ankle, we call them with the same name, right? And the reason <laughs> for that is because uh, the farro uh, was, the, was the grain with the hull. So th these, these grains have got a natural, um, a natural hull yeah. that, that protects them. So to cut a longer story short, because of that and other reason, they are more they are more uh, resistant to mm -hmm. to change in the in the climate. So even if they are not organic, I suspect there will be a lower input in the farm that they needed to do in terms of pesticides, etc. So it, ancient grain is always a good choice, um, not just for the micronutrients and uh, and the fact that they they've got um, a lower glycemic index, but also because they've got a less impact on the, on the environment where they are farmed especially if they are organic. So those are the major sustainable elements. We thought it was important to couple it with, um, with the packaging. And mm -hmm. that, was, that was challenging. <laughs> I <laughs> defined that choice as a very challenging choice. So the, easiest, the easiest way to do that was to take a, a, um, a, a, a paper sack, suitable yep. for, for food, uh, stitching, cotton stitch it, and done it. Yeah? Luckily uh, for us, as, as a human race, there's these amazing people that they are opening and restarting this concept of you buy what you need, which mm -hmm. are the zero waste store and trying to cut down on packaging. And uh, for us, they were a natural avenue for our product because the first thing that we could do was to put them in paper sacks. So we contacted them and they were really, really happy to get a British uh, pasta 
So uh -huh. you would not travel from God knows where. With traceability, organic, whole grain, so less zero waste, and in paper, in paper sacks. So, so we started working with them, and it was, and we still do, and we're still, uh -huh. we're still is our natural customer. Uh, then yeah. there is the customer that likes to pick up a product from the shelf, which is the majority of us. Yeah. So for those, we were looking for something that it was not paper, because paper is not exactly a barrier for uh, humidity. So the humidity can actually can actually come in from outside the paper bag, mm -hmm. and the pasta is like a sponge. It absorbs. If if there is a little, it's like it's like a dog, a sniffing dog. You know, if there is something there, it's gonna go. So the the the, the, the pasta, if there is a bit of humidity the humidity is going to get into the pasta it. and then it will crack it. So it can mm. ruin it badly. It could have mold, it could have uh, yeast, it could have all sorts of, uh, of um, way to degrade the product as well as cracking inside. Mm -hmm. So we needed something that was a good barrier, but it wasn't plastic. Uh, we yeah. found this material, uh, which was, uh, it's called the Nature Flex. Uh, okay. Nature, Nature Flex is uh, certified for both industrial compostability and home compostability. Mm -hmm. uh, the certification he has for home compostability is given by um, a, cer a certificate body called uh, TUV in yeah. Austria. And um, here's where it becomes interesting. They've got all sorts of standards for uh, establish whether a product is home compostable or not. And, uh, and uh, what we know is that he has to, to compost in uh, a home compost environment in less than six months. Mm -hmm. So this one composts in less than six months. How faster, I cannot tell you, because uh, what I've been told is that um, it all depends on uh, the level of humidity and the kind of yep. uh, bacteria that you have growing in your own, uh, in your own compost. Said that, if this uh, packaging is not, is not really ideally a packaging that you want to put into your dry waste or kitchen waste, mm -hmm. because that is, that is going to go to the landfill, and this yeah. packaging here is not designed to compost in landfill. It's, it's probably eventually gonna, gonna break down much faster than, uh, than plastic, uh, but it's not, it's not really the that's avenue a, designed that, for this. That's a super sensitive issue and thank you for touching it. I think it's important for everyone to be aware that, you know, when, when you read on, on the packaging that it is compostable there isn't you know guidance as to what to do at the moment but it's definitely good to to keep those keep those separate don't put them in the general waste bin for sure <laughs> yes this is one of the things that that's one of the things that i've always been um you know about because yeah. you yeah. do yeah you do have you do have a um a limited space okay so mm -hmm. This is compostable on its own. It has mm -hmm. got no ink inside. And the uh, other so we paper. thought of putting we thought of putting a paper sleeve around it, which is uh, recyclable. So this goes mm -hmm. in the blue bin to, to, to be to be fun. Um, how big is this? Uh, obviously, clearly, the smaller it is, uh, <laughs> the less the less material we use, the better it is. How many information do we have to put on this sleeve, and how many information would the so we, we can put the information on the web. Um, that also is a, is a bit of a thing. I mean, how many people are going to go to the page? Um, so is a, is we, we thought them all. I thought about um, having, um, what is it called? Not a having barcode, a, having a, a sign, having, yeah. Having a sign or something that, that says, but, uh, but no. So we, we limit ourselves to say that the bag is uh, made uh, in Britain. Mm -hmm. which I think is important um, because there's a bit of a circular economy having to do with the creation of the bag. Mm -hmm. And this is certified as fully compostable in both industrial and home composting environments. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say. And it is certified for marine biodegradation. So that means yep. that it biodegrades in the environment. You're not going to see this uh, material washing up in the on ocean. Our, yeah. on, our, <laughs> on our ocean. Uh, on our, exactly. Um, Say that this was very challenging uh, packaging to work with. Uh, it, you know, the sealing it, it was uh, challenging. Um, we had to adapt to a different uh, style of uh, sealing mm -hmm. rather than, uh, than this one with the lines. Um, handling it uh, in, uh, in, in, our, in our factory, because it's a material that reacts, just like the pasta, reacts to humidity. That's why it's mm -hmm. compostable. So if it's not handled properly, you know, it might, it might shrink a little bit. 
it doesn't alter the pasta inside, obviously, but then it looks like it has composted a little <laughs> bit already. And that, that's, not, that's not a good thing. So, um, you know, we had to, to keep the temperature. We have to keep temperature control also in, uh, in the storage that we have for, for the pasta once it's packed. And we had to take to, uh, to adapt, basically. It's been a bit of a learning curve for us. Yeah, can you imagine? I, I don't think this is, um, I don't consider this the, the final point of our journey. I mean, this, mm. is how, this is how we started. Um, we, have, uh, we have improved this up to optimize the use of this particular material. But this is not to say that there's not going to be better material out there in the future. Uh, it's something that is, uh, is very important at the moment. A lot more companies are working on it. And um, I keep uh, asking and... Uh, and the talking with uh, with uh, whoever supplies our bag and around in the industry to see if there is something that is better than this, and uh, and there is there are projects that we've been doing we've been uh, we've been even working with uh, one packaging that uh, you put it into boiling water so this one is edible mm -hmm. and um, right. and dissolvable yeah? yeah so this is a packaging which provides just as good as a barrier as this one to humidity you can you can actually cook it together with the pasta. Um, <laughs> And, and, I, and I had it, and it's fantastic. It looks amazing <laughs> too. And it's made here in the UK. It's a British, uh, it's a British uh, idea from, from, uh, from beginning to end. The problem is that there isn't yet enough uh, production of this, uh, of this field to yeah. make it suitable for, uh, for commercialization effectively. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and we're there. We're pondering whether we're going to do a smaller line of, um, of edible packaging. Uh, just to reinforce our um, our values of uh, of how important it is for us to follow the the product from the beginning right to the end to what happens as well to the packaging. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, you're at the forefront, almost uh, leading a part part of that dialogue. So uh, even even if it is you know uh, uh, a small uh, sample line of, of what it could be. I think it would be fantastic for people to see that and start becoming more familiar with the concept and the idea. Because, um, yeah, just eating eating our packaging has not been in one of our, um, yeah, we're not familiar with the concept yet. So it would be interesting to see how people react to that. Um, yeah, it, that's that's one of the things that we, we were discussing with, um, with, that, uh, with that idea was uh, the, the edible side of it. Um, stepping away still from the edible element of that particular uh, material is the fact that is uh, is uh, is that is biodegradable. That is far more compostable than uh, than this. Yeah. It's a completely natural uh, material that maybe if it goes into landfill as well, it will it will, it will um, just um, break down in a few. It will just break down much weeks, much yeah. faster than uh, than nature flex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh wow. Isn't, I mean, you guys are doing all of the exciting stuff that we, I mean, we wish every single, every single supplier could ha cover all the, all the elements that you, you're looking, um, you're looking at, uh, Giovanni, it's, it's amazing. Um, Thank and, you. Yeah, I mean, it's organic, ancient grains, you're looking at the packaging, you're working through the quality of the product again and again, keeping the nutrition um, all the uh, nutritional elements uh, as much intact as possible with the drying process and working with meals, independent meals and and farmers as much as possible. I think it's um, it's all great and we are delighted to have you on board on today and I think we can Thank keep you. the dialogue open and keep on on discussing how we can bring even more suppliers to to use, you know, um, compostable packaging. I think people are struggling because there isn't a network necessarily. As you said, you you were uh, fearful enough. You had the um, the will to find the solutions uh, throughout. But um, I think there are a lot of businesses who are struggling to find the right approach. Um, and uh, and 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 we can we can help them perhaps by opening up a conversation around the subject. So yeah, let's let's keep the dialogue open. Yeah, one, one <laughs> of one of one of our luck, uh, uh, one of good a good factor for us was that um, we did take a lot of time to develop the product before mm. we opened up here. Uh, then obviously, once you once you start producing, there's a lot of, there's a massive process to go through because you know new factory new new quantities uh, 
um, handle the environment uh, changes changes in the in the past future. I mean, um, yep. learning how to exactly handle two or three hundred, four hundred of this you, know, you needed to to close. So there was a lot of teething, but at least we started with with that pro. We started by packaging like that. Uh, it becomes a lot more difficult to to uh, to change once you've got a machine that is working with, uh, with uh-huh. uh, and is is used to work with one with one material. So for us, it was a good thing to to start with this right from the beginning, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, take that decision from day one. So if we don't have it, we we just stick it to the paper sacks until until we get <laughs> the, the right the material that we want. You know, um, yeah. and yeah, it's- I can see that. We, we've got we've got uh, lots of ideas, um, mm. and um, Pasti Future is uh, is working uh, a lot on new project. Um, we've got uh, lots of, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, is right now that I feel that we are um, we are creating our own uh, pasta Pasti Future identity, you know, pasta factory identity, and um, we are lucky enough to to be interacting with uh, some extraordinary people out there. They are really they're really dedicated far more than we are to 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 zero waste to to sustainability to to regenerative farming and um and is it through them that we get uh, as soon as we get an opportunity we hear something that uh, that could be interesting for our pasta we 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 are very very open to 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 go for it is what this is one of those uh, this is one of those uh, factory at the moment that is a truly artisan in that respect um, mm-hmm. It really is for us the best thing to see something, you know, being created out of uh, that that could potentially, you know, be better for the environment uh, or, or also for our plate and palate and uh, create a little bit of variety in uh, in, uh, in, a, in the, in the, in the product. Mix, so we yeah. have some very exciting uh, product that we're working on. We have two new flowers coming in in the next couple of weeks. And um, and I reckon we are going in the direction of um, doing something that maybe not even in uh, in the in the motherland of a pasta, you know, is uh, is um, known been tried. So we mm-hmm. want to we want to do something that is uh, is is exceptionally ours, you know, very very British in a, in, a, in a way. So we keep working on it, and, uh, and I hope that you see. Are there, are there any big plans to announce? You will see the soon? results soon. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I mean, we're looking forward. We're looking forward, and thank you so much for joining us again today. It's been uh, most amazing to, to you know, see see hear you and your story and everything behind the scenes and how you um, the process of making making pasta we invite everyone of course to um yeah just find find your pasta either on today.com or on pasta feature carlesia's website and um yep. and yeah let's let's connect again soon i'm looking forward to hearing all about that new product and seeing you at the mill seeing you at the mill as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, Whenever the new product, uh, hopefully in the next uh, in the next month, we will have something very exciting to to present to to all of you. Thank okay. you so much, uh, Hara uh, Deli Wander Tadeli, for this opportunity. It doesn't happen very often to be able to coordinate uh, things like this. Uh, I really truly enjoyed it, and um, and that's it. And I hope to have another chance to to have a little audience to talk about what we're doing because we love what we're doing and we love talking about it. <laughs> I know, I know you should. It's a, it's a fantastic story, fantastic product. Thank you again so much. Grazie. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Ciao. Bye, all. Bye. Thank you.